Yesterday, I shared a passage from Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus, it's actually like the first thing that starts his ministry, is Jesus proclaiming that the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of the heavens, has come near or is at hand, right at the beginning of his ministry. Today, I want to direct your attention to the very end of the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 28, verses 23 to 31. And this is after Jesus has been crucified, resurrected, ascended, the Holy Spirit has come upon those first about 120 believers in Jerusalem, 3,000 are added to their number on the day of Pentecost, and then moving out geographically from Jerusalem, the good news about Jesus, the good news of the gospel about the kingdom of heaven, uh, then begins to spread north, east, south, and west. And we see that throughout the book of Acts. And Acts ends with the Apostle Paul, who had been a persecutor of the church and becomes the greatest promoter and church planter that we see in the New Testament. It ends with him in uh, basically under house arrest in prison, if you will, in Rome. And he is still preaching the gospel. And the very last verse in the book of Acts is... Paul was there, and we're told he was there for two whole years. Um, and he welcomed all who came to him. In verse 31, what was he doing? Proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So it's interesting to me that the book of Acts, which is all about how the gospel spreads in spite of opposition, resistance, persecution, even the martyrdom of some believers like Stephen and James, that none of that stops the spread of the kingdom. And Paul is proclaiming the kingdom of God. He is proclaiming the message as he had received it, uh, both, we believe, from the risen Christ who confronted him on the road to Damascus and as he learned the message of the kingdom uh, from the other apostles, from people like Barnabas who took him under his wing and mentored him and introduced him uh, to the rest of Jesus' original core group. Uh, but that's what we are to do, right, as followers of Christ. We are to proclaim the message of the kingdom. And that kingdom, again, as I said yesterday, is a kingdom of grace and truth, of love and mercy, compassion and courage and generosity and service. That's how the church is known. And we see that throughout the book of Acts as they pray, as they worship together, as they share their resources to help one another and to help the poor, and as they stand not afraid, they don't, they don't operate from a position of fear to opposition, they acknowledge it, they know it's real. But as we read in Acts chapter 5, for example, in the arrest, second arrest of the apostles, uh, that they're released, but they're beaten before they're let set free, and they rejoiced that they were deemed worthy of suffering dishonor for the name. So like Paul, uh, we don't fear opposition, we don't fear imprisonment, we don't fear persecution. What we fear is God alone, and we share the good news of the kingdom of God everywhere we go.